Good morning and welcome to you all. Welcome to this service of morning prayer on Tuesday the 23rd of March as we continue this journey through Passion Tide. Today is the National Day of Reflection as we mark one year since the first UK lockdown in response to COVID-19. There is so much to remember over this past 12 months, people that we've lost, uh, communities drawing together and for the continued fight against this global pandemic that we all face. So today is a day of reflection for these past 12 months and also looking forward to the future as well. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. A Song of Lamentation is it nothing to you, or you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. For this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 35. Give me justice, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness. Contend, O Lord, with those that contend with me, Fight against those that fight against me. Take up shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and disgraced. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be put to confusion. Let them be as chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord thrusting them down. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without a cause. Without any cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they laid. Let them fall in it to their destruction. Then will my soul be joyful in the Lord, and glory in his salvation. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those that are too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who would despoil them. False witnesses rose up against me. They charged me with things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good, to the desolation of my soul. But as for me, 
When they were sick, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayer returned empty to my bosom, it was as though I grieved for my friend or brother. I behaved as one who mourns for his mother, bowed down and bought very low. But when I stumbled, they gathered in delight. They gathered together against me. As if they were strangers I did not know, they tore at me without ceasing. When I fell, they mocked me. They gnashed at me with their teeth. O oh Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their ravages and my poor life from the young lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you in the mighty throng. Do not let my treacherous foes rejoice over me, or those who hate me without a cause mock me with their glances. For they do not speak of peace, but invent deceitful schemes against those that are quiet in the land. They open wide their mouths and derided me, saying, We have seen it with our very eyes. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silent. Go not far from me, O Lord. Awake, arise to my cause, to my defence, my God and my Lord. Give me justice, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness. Let them not triumph over me. Let them not say to themselves, our hearts desire. Let them not say, we have swallowed them up. Let all who rejoice at my trouble be put to shame and confusion. Let those who boast against me be clothed with shame and dishonour. Let those who favour my cause rejoice and be glad. Let them say always, great is the Lord who delights in his servant's well-being. So shall my tongue be talking of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Give me justice, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness. Free us, righteous God, from all oppression, and bring justice to the nations, that all the world may know you as King of kings and Lord of lords, now and for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. So we continue our readings from the book of Jeremiah. Today reading chapter 22, verses 1 to 5 and verses 13 to 19. Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O King of Judah, sitting on the throne of David, you and your servants and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, act with justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed and do no wrong or violence to the alien, the orphan and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then through the gates of this house shall enter kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not heed these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbours work for nothing and does not give them their wages, who says, I will build myself a spacious house with large upper rooms, who cuts out windows for it, panelling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Are you a king because you complete in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and the needy. Then it was well. Is not this to know me? says the Lord. But your eyes and heart are only on your dishonest gain, for shedding innocent blood and for practising oppression and violence. Therefore thus says the Lord, concerning King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, Lord, or 
Alas, his majesty, with the burial of a donkey he shall be buried, dragged off and thrown out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Here ends our first reading. Song of the Lord's Gracious Deeds I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. Who is this that comes from Edom, coming from Bosra, his garments stained crimson? Who is this in glorious apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I who announce that right has won the day. It is I, says the Lord, for I am mighty to save. Why are your robes all red, O Lord, and your garments like theirs who tread the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. I recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. All that God has done for us in his mercy, by his many acts of love. For God said, surely they are my people, my children who will not deal falsely. And he became their saviour in all their distress. So God redeemed them by his love and pity. He lifted them up and carried them for all the days of old. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praises of the Most High. We also continue this morning to hear from the Gospel of St John that we have been reading through, chapter 11, today reading verses 45 to the end. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied, that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Jesus therefore no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from there to a town called Ephraim, in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and were asking one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should let them know so that they might arrest him. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from our high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. So let us pray. On this National Day of Reflection, as we mark the first anniversary of the first UK lockdown in response to COVID-19, let us lament with all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones as a result of the global pandemic and commit ourselves to build up our communities through prayer and practical action. Lord, we cannot believe what the last 12 months has brought us the pain and sorrow, the separation that we have felt, the withdrawing from normal life, the isolation and loneliness felt by so many. As we reflect back on this past year, we know that everybody has been affected by all that we have been through, either through loss, the effect in their own health, struggles that people have felt economically. Lord, we bring these last 12 months to you, knowing that in amongst all the difficulties, all the struggles and all the sadness, that you have been there with us. You have been at the heart of it all. We thank you, Lord, for the way people have helped out. For those volunteers who have stood up and been counted in the care of others. We give thanks for your call upon people's lives, especially in medical research, to produce vaccines, which give us the hope for the future. God of love, as we think about all that has changed this year, help us to trust that you are always with us. As we remember those who have died, help us to trust that they are at peace with you. As we reach out to others with kindness and care, may hope shine out in every heart and home. Amen. As we reflect then on this past year, reflect today and as we look to the future, we know Lord that you journey alongside us for you have promised us this in the Gospels and throughout Scripture. As we make our prayers today, so we pray for the time we will spend in prayer today the time we spend in prayer with others, for the prayers we will make on our own, and for the time we will keep in silence. We pray for our world, a world which has been so devastated, a world which has changed beyond recognition, but where there are still prayers needed for peace, for reconciliation, for that building up of local communities. We pray for the church throughout the world, for its place at this time, for the prayers it's made for so many others, for the support and help it has given by being a place of sanctuary, we pray for our young people throughout the world, for those who have been affected badly by this pandemic, who have been unable to go to school, see their friends, live lives as children. We pray for those who have been hit economically through the loss of jobs and businesses, for those who are teetering on the brink. We give thanks 
for those who have kept going, for those who have continued to provide for our needs, especially praying for our key workers in various different roles and responsibilities that they have had to keep the country running. We pray for our government, for the decisions that they have made and the decisions that they continue to make, that they are given that gift of wisdom and discernment. We pray for those who've been very much on the front line, for those amongst our key workers, for those who have risked their lives. And especially we pray for the health service, so badly hit over these past 12 months, with that frontline work that they have had to do. We thank you, Lord, that you have given them strength and courage, that you have given them peace beyond all understanding, and that you have helped them when they felt overwhelmed. And so we pray for those who've worked in the caring sector, in hospitals, hospices, care homes, out in the community. And we pray for those who've worked behind the scenes to support them, both at work and through their family life. We pray for those places where vaccinations will be administered today, for those who will receive them, and for these small stepping stones that we are able to take, to be able to meet up with our loved ones, to be able to return to normal life, to enjoy doing the things that we've always enjoyed. But hopefully now with a focus on those things which are truly most important to us. We know, Lord, that today there are many who cry out in pain and distress. Many who long for your healing and wholeness. Who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Amongst them we pray for Lisa, David, Margaret, Jeff. Alan, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Brian, Joanna, Jean, Jane, Eric, Jennifer, Barbara, Pauline and Margaret. Lord, be with them today. And so we pray also for those who have died. We pray for those who have died this past day, this past night. For those who have died these past 12 months. For those that we remember this day. We pray for those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur this week. Lord, bind up the brokenhearted, wipe away the tears of those who mourn, and bring them your comfort. And as we move through this Passion Tide, help us to focus on the cross, knowing that Jesus died and rose again for us, opened the gate of glory, and gave us all the gift of eternal life. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can I thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today? It's been lovely to have your company. We are having an outdoor service at 12 o'clock today as part of the National Day of Reflection outside church. If you're able to come along and stand socially distanced to join us in prayer and silence as we reflect back on these past 12 months and look to the future. Um, we have a service of evening prayer at 5 o'clock. And if you're not able to join us at lunchtime today, but do keep that silence, we're also invited to light a candle this evening at 8 o'clock and place it in our window, again as a sign of reflection. In the meantime, I do hope that you have a good day, that you stay safe, take care of yourselves, and that you uh, remain, as always, in my prayers. Do take care.